G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing part two of my new series of what it's like to run a fish room. If you haven't seen part one, you can watch it right here. But if you are good to go, let's get straight into it with this week's video. Okay guys, so the next thing I'm going to do is a water change. So I'm gonna do it the lazy way. I'm gonna take water out of these two tanks here and I'm gonna show you how I do that. So the first thing we need to do is go to the back of the stands and turn these two inlet taps off. So this one and this one. So now water has stopped flowing into those two four foot aquariums. There's no more water flowing into this aquarium or this aquarium. So the next step in this process is to fill this clear vinyl hose with water. I then put a sponge filter over one end to prevent fish from being sucked up by the siphon and that's cable tied to this hose. Now, I'm gonna start the siphon and you'll see how it all works. So guys, the next step in starting a siphon with a very long hose is to get your garden hose, have a trigger nozzle like this on the end of it and turn the tap on. So very simple stuff. So the tap's on now. Let some water out. You know this hose is now filled with water. So now I'm gonna close the tap and the pressure in this hose is maintained until I lift the nozzle. Okay, so we're back in the fish room now and this is pressurized. This hose is now pressurized. So what I do is I use a little bucket, release the pressure that's in the hose. Now remember the tap is off now, but this will maintain a siphon. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect this from this uh, trigger nozzle and I'm gonna connect it to that part there. And it's gonna be difficult to do with one hand. So that's connected now. Now the siphon hasn't started yet. The siphon won't start until I take the hose off the tap. Now the hose is ready to start siphoning. Now as I said, the siphon won't start until I take the hose off the end of the tap in the garden. So this is basically primed, ready to start. The big thing I want to show you though are these clamps. You get these clamps from your rejects stores. Uh, they're pretty cheap, say $5 for a pack of two. Uh, these are pretty expensive ones though from Bunnings. Uh, these were about $20 for two, so they're really heavy duty, quite strong, and uh, they really do the job. They do a great job. They help you secure hoses to tanks. Very important, must have little accessory for your fish room to help you do water changes easier. All right, now let's start the siphon. Okay guys, I'm back outside now, so all I'm gonna do is take this off. And as I go into my backyard, you'll see water start to come out of this. The lower I go, and the siphon started. Then you can water your garden. So now the siphon started, you see there's water coming out. Got a little bit of a knot here. Make sure there's no knots in your, in your hose and happy days. So you can see how long this hose is. All the way back into the house. So here we are. So the siphon started and no fish are getting sucked up. No buckets needed, nothing. Now, I've got a little indicator on here. I know once the water level reaches the top of this piece of electrical tape, that I should stop the siphon. And then the same with this four footer. Once I reach to this point on this one, I'll stop the siphon. And I have enough water in these barrels to fill them both back up. So this is my water change water, it's ready to go into this system. So basically when I do water changes on this system, I'm replacing 400 litres of water, basically a four foot tank by two foot by two foot tank of worth of water a week into this system. And it will dilute through the entire system because all these tanks are connected. And that's one of the big benefits of having your tanks connected together with plumbing. There are some disadvantages obviously with fish illnesses, fish diseases can go through a system like this very easily, very quickly. But you also have to be careful 
with individual tanks. If you have individual tanks, if you use a net, for example, if you, if you use a net on one tank that has had sick fish, and then you go straight to another tank that doesn't have sick fish in it, you could easily transmit illness through your system as well. So you've got to be careful regardless of how you run your system. But I'm pretty lazy when it comes to water changes. I know what I'm like, so I tried to make this as easy as possible for me. Water changes are in progress. I can sit back, wait for the tank to drain, and then fill the tanks back up with a pump to drain water back into the tanks. Anyway, I'm going to start siphoning on this tank now. Exactly the same process as the previous one. So guys, as you can see, the siphons have started and the water level is getting lower in both of these four foot tanks. And as you saw, the siphon process is pretty easy to start. These are 30 meter long garden hoses each. There's no way you're gonna start a siphon via the traditional method of sucking on one end of a hose and starting a siphon that way. So that's the way I start the siphons in this fish room. Now the whole process will take about an hour, hour and a half to drain both these tanks and fill them back up with water then that's 20 tanks with water changes done for the week. And I can just sit back and let it happen. I don't have to lift up heavy buckets of water to do it. It's all just done with siphons and then another pump pumps water back into the system. Simple as that. Now there are alternatives to doing water changes on a system like this. I have thought about the process of getting some drains put into the fish room and then draining the tanks straight into, the, into those drains that will drain out into the garden. Uh, but I haven't done that yet and this is the process I'm doing at the moment. Um, and the big, big thing with the water, don't waste it, don't put it down the drain. Put it on your garden beds, it's great for your lawns, it's great for your gardens. Uh, it's got nitrates in it, which is a great fertiliser for your plants. So don't waste it, don't put it down the drain, use it on your gardens. So I'm just going to sit here, wait for the tanks to drain and then we'll hook up my return pump to these tanks and fill them back up and that's this entire system, 20 tanks done for the week. So I'm going to stop emptying this tank out. The water level is low enough. This tank has a little bit more to go, about an inch of water left in this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start water changes on this rack of tanks. So these are individual tanks and they have my bristlenose catfish in them. So rather than killing the siphon completely on this tank, I'm going to keep it going. So what I do is I grab the hose and crimp it. Crimp it in a few spots, like so, and you can hold that siphon for a while. Now just pop it into the bristlenose tank. Now again, great thing with these clamps, clamp it to the tank. Now no bristlenose are going to get sucked into this siphon because of the sponge that's on the under the siphon. Now the thing with these tanks, they're a little bit more fiddly than the system I've got behind me. Because they're bristlenose catfish and they're bare bottom, the great thing with them though is that I can see all the poo that's basically at the bottom of the tank and I can just siphon all that out. I don't need a gravel vac, I can just be careful not to suck up any bristlenose catfish and siphon out all the poo. Now the way I do that is I take the sponge off the end. Now you're probably wondering why I don't use some PVC with a tap to close the siphon off. And the reason is, when I'm siphoning these aquariums with all the fry of the bristlenose, it's very easy to suck up fry. So what I do is, I grab this bit here and I can close it. So I can effectively stop the siphon. So if I do suck up any fry, I can stop the siphon, let the fry out of the hose and then continue the siphon by letting it go. So it's great to have a flexible bit of hose for this purpose because you can just stop it at any time that you need. Now I'm just going to go through. This takes some time. It's a bit of a, bit of a uh, boring process. So I'm just going to vacuum all these tanks up like this, siphoning only the uneaten food and the poo out of the bottom of the tanks. Trying not to siphon any bristlenose. So as I see the bristlenose approach the pipe, I clamp it down and I try to do this once to twice a week. One of the many great things about having a fish room <laughs> is sucking up bristlenose catfish poo. It's fantastic. <laughs> In all seriousness, it is great for the lawn. 
So being careful not to get any catfish sucked up. There's some uneaten, uneaten pieces of cauliflower in here. And then once I've got all the particulates out of the tank, I pop the sponge back on and I let it do its thing. And the great thing about having that, uh, having the cable tie on this so long is that it keeps the sponge from coming into contact with the front pane of glass and getting sucked onto the glass. And the other thing I suggest you do, because of the weight of the water in the hose, uh, it can kind of kink up here as it goes over the lip of the aquarium. Put another clamp on so you can create a nice curve down and the siphon doesn't get cut up as much. It doesn't get cut off as much. So then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this tank's ready. It's gonna, I'll drain it to about halfway, fill it up with water, and then that tank's done. And then move to the next one and the next one. So that's the process I'm gonna do now. But before I do that, I'm gonna cut the siphon on the other four foot tank. So that tank there is pretty much ready. So I'm gonna stop the siphon on that. And I'm gonna actually just kill the siphon. I don't need that hose anymore. So guys, the next process in the water change step is to fill these tanks back up. And this is the pump that I use. This is a 10,000 litre per hour pump, really cheap one that I bought off eBay, and I only use it for the purpose of topping up the tanks after a water change. So I've got this long cord here attached to the handle. So I can lower the pump in and out of the big water drums that are behind us. So guys, the pump is in the drum, got the vinyl hose, and it's hooked up to the tank with two clamps. So this can't move now when I turn the pump on. The other thing I've got here is another one of those containers that I use for bagging fish. They've got holes in them, just perfect for putting water back in the tanks without disrupting the sand bed. So use one of these to soften the water flow coming back into the tank. So I'm just going to turn the pump on now and this tank will start filling up. So you've got water flowing through the vinyl hose. And there it goes. So this tank's now filling up. And this amount of water will take exactly one drum. And while all that's happening, this tank is ready. I don't need to drain any more. On to the next tank. Okay guys, so I've switched the siphon onto this tank from that tank. And this is my peppermint bristle nose tank. So I'm just going to siphon the water basically to the same level and that would be right to go. And then we'll go on to the next tank. Meanwhile, these tanks are filling up, well, this tank is anyway. And then this tank will be next. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So guys, I've gotten as much poop out of these tanks as I can. So all I'm doing now is completing the draining process with the sponge back on the siphon so I don't siphon up any bristlenose catfish. So I just have to finish draining this one and then drain this one. I've gotten as much feces out as I can. Over to the other side, we've got this four foot is full and that four foot is almost full. As you can see, the water is a little bit cloudy from the water change water. Now, that is because I'm using Fish Keeper's Choice to raise my pH and hardness in my water. You won't get this cloudiness if you use a Seekin product, but it is over double the price of the Fish Keeper's Choice, and this does not harm your fish at all. It's just a little bit of cloudiness. Now, I did have the Fish Keeper's Choice product in the barrels uh, for about a week. Uh, I, I fill these up now, add some Fish Keeper's Choice to the barrels, and let them aerate for about a week and they're still cloudy. So what's gonna happen now, I'm gonna open the inlets on these two forefooters. You can see the inlets here where my fingertip is. Water's gonna flow into these tanks, fill them up. Water's gonna overflow into the bulkheads and down to the sump. Then that is going to filter out this cloudy looking water and it's gonna dilute as it flows through all these aquariums on this side of the fish room. Harmless to the fish, does nothing to them. All my fish are still breeding, they're fine. They've had this process going for months now. So now I'm gonna open the taps to the return pipes. So first foot up, four footer. That's about enough flow, having the tap open about halfway. 
and this one now. So again, about halfway. And you can see the water is starting to flow into the aquarium. So water will flow into these aquariums, it will come down these drain lines, and then go all the way to the sump from this bulkhead and into the sump. And these tanks will clear up over the next hour. And the, you won't even notice these tanks getting cloudy at all. The filter will filter it all out and it will dilute as it goes through all these tanks. So how are we going on this wall? So basically all the tanks are drained. Uh, that's the last tank that I've got left to do and I will start filling them up now. With these tanks, I fill them up with the barrel that I've got here as well as from the tanks above. So there's no fish in this tank here and there's no fish in this tank here. So they're my water change water tanks at the moment until I get some more barrels to do more water changes on these tanks. But I've gotten as much poop as I can out of these bristlenose catfish tanks. You really gotta be careful you're not siphoning up any baby bristlenose. They are hard to see against the black background. Well, the albinos aren't, but the normal colors are. So this tank is almost done and I'll start filling them up. And now we fill up this rack. Same principle as the rack behind me. Use this little container to slow the water uh, flow down a little bit and with just a hose from draining this tank that has no fish in it. I purely use this tank at the moment for water change water into this bristlenose catfish tank. Very, very simple. As this tank is filling up, see there's still a lot of water left and I don't have long to go to finish filling this tank up. I'm also filling this tank up. So using this water drum. So the more of these clamps that you have, the more you can do at the same time. But it's very easy to forget that you're filling up some tanks. So you gotta really keep your eye on which tank you're filling up and uh, so you don't overflow them. So just a little bit of concentration is required. Very easy to get distracted in the fish room though. So I'm just keeping my eye on this tank now. I'm gonna stop the siphon on that one soon. And then I'm gonna move on to the peppermint bristlenose tank as I fill up these tanks. So just getting multiple things done at the same time. What I also usually do is I start to fill up these water drums now with fresh water. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm trying to film, I'm trying to fill up two tanks and I just need to concentrate on doing this. Uh, but usually I have a couple of things going at the same time just to speed the process up a little bit more. So all the tanks are done, they're all full. Now what I'm gonna do is take the return pump out of this barrel and I'm just getting all the water out of the vinyl tubing so it doesn't leak out onto the floor. I'm trying to get as much water out as possible before I pull it out of the drum. And it keeps the, the vinyl tubing nice and neat. So I grab the pump from this blue rope, let it drip in the drum, and then I place it on the towel. There'll be some water left in this pump that I'll try and drain out. And that's basically it. All I need to do now is fill the drums back up with fresh water, treat them with dechlorinator, and the blue drums in the back, I'll add some buffer, pH buffer to the water to increase the pH and the hardness of that water for my Tanganyika cichlids. So I'll just put this away now. So the next thing I do is fill up these water drums with fresh water. And there's two things I need to add to them. One is the dechlorinator and the other is the pH buffer and cichlid lake salt. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna turn the tap on. I'm using two clamps to hold the hose in place. What I'm gonna do though to quiet it down is put the hose all the way down in the drum so you can hear me better. So now the hose is all the way down in the drum. I don't like to do this all the time because I like to hear the water filling up. When you don't hear water like this, it's very easy to get distracted. This thing overflows and floods your fish room or worse still, your lounge room. So always have the hose in the water so you can hear it. The other thing I do is set a timer on my phone for about 15 minutes. I know it takes about 15 minutes to fill these drums up. So I'm gonna do that right now, set a timer, and add the products, the prime and the cichlid lake salt to this uh, water. 
So a good little feature to have on your phone. Set the timer, 15 minutes. I'm actually gonna set it to about 13 because we've already had it going for a bit. And that alarm will go off once the time has reached 13 minutes. And that will remind me to turn the tap off, <laughs> hopefully. So the thing I'm gonna add now is some Cichlid Lake Salt. Again, this isn't a Seacom product. This is by a company called Fish Keeper's Choice. It's a lot cheaper than Seacom. And I've been using it for a number of months now and haven't noticed anything different to the Seacom, to the Seacom product, apart from the cloudiness of the water. About 10 tablespoons into this, and I'll add another 10 of tablespoons into the other drum when the hose is in that. So the hose is you know, cycling that salt around and uh, mixing it up as best as I, as I can get it. Next is prime. So I add about four to five mils of prime to this with a syringe. You get a pretty accurate reading, easy to do. I'll, fill the, I'll put prime in the other drum when the hose is in that drum, help mix it around a bit. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it for the Tanganyik and cichlids. This product is, a, that, that cichlid lake salt is an all-in-one product. It's a pH increaser and a water hardener. The only thing with that is, if you've got high pH water, say above a pH of eight, and you've got soft water, well, you're gonna increase your pH as well as your hardness with the one product using this. So this won't really be an ideal thing for you. If, however, you've got pH that's low out of the tap and soft, then this product is for you. So just bear that in mind. If you're gonna use a seek, you can, you'll be able to use a Seacom product to raise hardness and pH independently of each other, but with this product you can't do that because it's an all-in-one product. So all the water changes are complete. The whole process took about two and a half to three hours to do, and that includes refilling up the drums with fresh water. And also, as you can see, the two four-foot tanks, they're continuing to clear up. They almost look as clear as the other tanks as that water dilutes through the entire system. I didn't do a fantastic job on some of the catfish tanks. I can still see some poop in them and I'm probably going to have to do another midweek water change on this rack. However, this rack is good to go for another week. Anyway guys, I really hope you found this video informative. If you did, please hit the like, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. Alright, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.